everyone. This is Emmanuel Gomez with LRMonline.com, and I am here to give you a brief introduction into our next interview, which will be for the documentary Barefoot, The Mark Bomber Story. This is by award-winning filmmaker Julie Sokolo. It was just released a few days ago on VOD and digital. Now, in the past, it has won the award for Best Documentary Premiere at the Heartland International Film Festivals, and since then has played in several other film festivals around the world. Now, in this interview, not only are we joined by Sokolo, but we are also joined by the parents of Mark, Jim, and Mary Bomber. Now, the reason why we're doing this just brief interview introduction this way is I may have mispronounced his name a couple of times in the beginning. I've since apologized and I course corrected mid-interview, but I really felt like I needed to take a quick moment to give the proper introduction. So I hope you guys enjoy it as it was a very powerful film, very much of its time, especially now in 2020. And check out the film afterwards. Barefoot, the Mark Bomber story. My first question uh, to you, Julie, is what, what compelled you and what makes this made this such an important film for you to make? Yeah, so uh, in 2016, I stumbled on Mark Bomber's YouTube videos where he was chronicling his barefoot walk across America and, uh, you know, to protest climate change. And I felt really moved by the videos. He's really funny. You know, the New Yorker compared him to Andy Kaufman, the uh, incredible comedian. So uh, I really loved his kind of absurdist wavelength. And, uh, you know, at that point in time, I also felt like climate change is just the biggest issue facing, you know, the survival of the species. So uh, when Mark was killed on this walk, I was devastated, uh, even just as a fan who never met him. So I reached out to his parents, Jim and Mary, and asked if I could help tell their son's story through a documentary. And they said yes. So we've been, you know, working together uh, on this film ever since. In, in the documentary, I think what stands out to me the most is his unique personality. And I mean unique in the most amazing way that I feel everyone should be. Can, can, you guys, can you guys talk about why I feel like I missed out on meeting one of the greatest human beings? Mary? Yes, Mark was unique, that is for sure. And even at a young age, Mark was could be comical, very serious, but he was his own person. And he really, he had a, a passion very young in life for what he believed in. But after he was killed, so many people came up to us and said, oh, Mark was my best friend. And we had never heard about him because he had a different life. But it wasn't like one person said it. There were so many people that came out and said it because Mark really cared about people. And he had a way, he wanted to hear what was important in their life. So... Yeah, Mark Mark was one of a kind. It, it seems like the film, along with the importance of climate change, is also a, a message that Mark gives everybody about being true to yourself and s sticking to what you're passionate about. Uh, can you guys talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, I think that, um, you know, I don't, I don't think Mark entirely was sure where he wanted to be in his life. I, I think he did not necessarily want to be comfortable. I think he felt as though, you know, being comfortable often feels like being put in a box. And so he was trying to figure out a way, okay, you know, what can I do to live as close to the bone as possible so that, you know, I don't have all of these debts that keep me, you know, sort of enslaved to sort of the capitalist system where, you know, we get locked into jobs that we de don't necessarily like because now we have a car payment and a house payment and all of these things. So I think that was part of it. And yet there is a very practical side of Mark. It's, it's weird because, you know, from the time of, you know, when he went off to college uh, in, in, in his empty bedroom, you know, I started using that as an office space and he had this big old desk 
And, you know, uh, I was cleaning the drawer out to use it for mine. And I saw this notebook and I wasn't trying to be nosy, but it was actually a notebook he had from baseball uh, in high school where, you know, every day he had like drills set up, like almost like a routine, like hit off the tee for 15 minutes, you know, do this, do that. And I think he brought that same approach to his writing. I think he brought that approach to, um, in 2014, I think he, he went through a breakup or his girlfriend at the time broke up with him. And I think he felt, I don't know if I would call it depressed, but rather than sort of go inward, he recognized, you know, I really need to start being around people. So he would make a conscientious effort to, oh, if people invite me to go out after work, I'll go out. And Mark didn't drink. Mark was kind of a straight edge and he didn't drink, didn't use drugs. But he would go out with friends to a bar and have a glass of water, you know, but he was being around people. And I think it was around that time where he really began to cultivate this radical sort of uh, connect connectivity with other humans. You know, I feel like we live in a time where we've lost that. And I think it's worse now through the pandemic where everything's done like this through Zoom. Because we, we found this way of saying, you know, I really don't want to be around people. So this is a good excuse not to be around people versus saying, you know, at some point we need to get back to being with people because we're very easily controlled right now, all sort of dispersed. We have a lot more power when we come together. And these are the kinds of things I wish I could talk about with Mark, because I've been thinking about this now for six months, you know, Mark never lived his activism as a, as a bumper sticker on the back of a car or the signs that drive me crazy now. Oh, we, we believe in love. Yeah, right. You believe in love. You've been my neighbor for a year and a half and not once have you bothered to even try to reach out to me, you know? So there's so much BS out there. And I think for Mark, he recognized that, but rather than be kind of, kind of edgy like I am, he just said, you know, I'm going to just, see if I can find ways using humor, but also connecting with people in, in very real ways. You know, and I think he was really onto something. Julie, in, in telling Mark's story, I, I noticed that you go from his, his linear story also to current events happening at that time. I thought that was really clever because of uh, the way he expressed himself. So I felt like that's how many, uh, many people expressed themselves also at the time of, of the event. Can, can you talk about how you how you planned out this film? Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, while Mark was on his journey, um, you know, he, he started his walk uh, in October 2016 during election season. And so as he was walking, he was noticing all these Trump signs, you know, in, in Pennsylvania. And um, I think he was just kind of understanding that uh, there was more popularity for Trump than maybe some of us had thought who were sort of in a bubble living in a big city or something like that because he was in these rural areas walking through. Um, and then when the election night results were coming in, you know, he filmed himself reacting to that as he realized that Trump was going to be our new president. And because, you know, he filmed himself reacting to the political moment uh, that had to be in the film and we had to find a way to sort of interweave, you know, those current event moments with uh, Mark's kind of lo-fi self-shot, you know, footage. Uh, and I think we wanted to have a delicate balance of that uh, because ultimately this is a very personal story, you know, an intimate story of, of Mark's life and his journey on the road. But there is this bigger context of the rise of, you know, Trump rising to power. So uh, that was what we wanted to balance out. We're in a we're in a def, definitely a very strenuous year. Uh, a lot of the things that he was talking about uh, years ago are, are are really being highlighted now. I'm I'm in California. I have wildfires in my backyard, and it it just seems like he was a little bit of ahead of what everyone now is talking about. So my question, to all of you, is how how do you think Matt would feel about so many Americans now com coming forward, standing up to social justice, climate change, and, and really um, actually using their voice, whether, whether it's through programs or actually just voting. Yeah, I, mean, I think Mark was, was definitely an activist first. I don't know, it's hard to say, you know, he was a poet. Uh, 
so there was that part of it, but his activism was really important to him. And I think the choice that he made to work with a group like FANG in Rhode Island, which stands for fighting against natural gas, but even more than that, you know, they're very involved in immigrant uh, issues with refugees and, you know, the ice raids and things like that. Uh, Mark was very conscious of people on the margins. And I think Mark didn't, Mark always had this sort of thing where he was always going to take up for the, the, the sort of the underdog. You know, he wasn't the typical kid that, like, I remember one time in, in hockey, he said to me, hey, dad, when, when you were in high school and you played sports, did it bother you when the upperclassmen would be really mean to the younger kids and like do things like hazing and stuff? And Mark didn't really like that. And, and he said, you know, what should I do? And I go, well, sometimes it's hard when you're an underclassman, but you know, when you get to that place where you're a leader, you need to put these things in place that you want to see. And it's really amazing when he was co-captain on his hockey team in high school, how much of a great relationship he had with the young kids, including one night before the game, you know, they all had the helmets and at the national anthem, you take your helmets off and Mark had shaved his head. So all of the freshmen had done the same. And so when all of the freshmen took their helmets off, you heard this collective, like almost like, ah, from the other mothers, like, oh my God, he shaved his head, you know? But I think Mark, you know, he gave them rides home. He truly was somebody who, was almost like a big brother. He was an only child. So I think he adopted a lot of these underclassmen because he saw that. I don't want to be somebody who sort of lords what little power I have over other people. And I think he kind of carried that forward into his life where he really was concerned for, you know, feminism and, you know, environmental justice and economic justice and all of these things. Uh, and it, was, it wasn't just talk with him. He truly was somebody who lived it in, in, in terms of its carbon footprint and other things, so. Yeah, and you know, one other thing with this film, we're not telling the audience to go walk barefoot across America. You know, we're not expecting people to be as bold and performative uh, and fearless as Mark, but we're hoping that people will be inspired to do something in their own lives, you know, big or small, whether it's, you know, putting solar panels on your roof, eating less meat and having more of a plant-based diet, uh, driving less, having one less kid, you know, getting involved in a local grassroots organization. There's lots of things we can all be doing towards uh, protecting Earth. And, you know, we rely on the planet's health for our own human health, as we're seeing with, you know, COVID and um, the potential that, you know, climate change is going to uh, ramp up pandemics in the future. So, we really need to make a difference. Um, our lives depend on it. So we uh, also um, did not, we don't want Mark to be forgotten. And this film is a great way that Jim and I are really lucky that we have the film that Julie and the rest of the crew, they did such a wonderful job. As parents, Jim and I started a nonprofit with some other people uh, to remember Mark, and it's a Mark Bomber Sustainability Fund.org. We want to do good in his name. Um, we want to, what would Mark do? That's what we're trying to do to help people. So, actually, uh, following that up, my next question was going to be can, can you uh, talk about the Mark Bomber Sustainability Fund and what that is? The Mark Bomber. Um, Sustainability Fund exists to fund important community projects um, to, to raise awareness about the environment, to promote social justice, as well as involving the underserved communities. So basic, so um, we have a board, Jim and I and a couple of our friends started it. Um, we are, and then Mark's Two of his cousins are, we've added on to the board because we wanted younger people on and to keep it going. Um, we, Mark was really big on local farmers. So we found a local farmer, local farm, they, and we're providing compost. And the, 
the they're a nonprofit, the farmers a nonprofit, and they're providing good organic food to food pantries. And we know that Mark was so big about local farmers buying. Um, that is one thing we have done. Another thing is um, buying a hundred helmets um, for kids in Providence that would that would not have helmets. It was a bike safety thing. Another is um, we just we have scholarships at Greeley High School for a male and a female who are involved in the community. They're also a athlete, a student athlete. We we just are doing a lot of different things um, that we we just want Mark's name to be remembered. It sounds like you guys are doing a fantastic job with that. I want to thank you for spending some time with me this morning. And I also want to sincerely apologize. I don't know where in my notes I got the name mixed up. And uh, no worries. Did you do you want to uh, up to you if you want to re record the intro? We're happy to be on the line for that or whatever you want. Uh, it, it should. Uh, it, it should be fine. <laughs> I just uh, I am sorry. <laughs> it's just it to happen. Yeah, it's... Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, congratulations on a film on that great film. I, I hadn't heard of it before, but going into watching after watching it, it was it was just so loving and so relevant to this year. And I, I it really made me feel, man, I just wish he could be here this year to take, you know, take part in all of the things that are going on because we need more people like him. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank thanks. You. I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks. Cheers.